So, recently I found myself engaging in a couple of fighter battles with some people from discords and on certain servers. In fact, the gameplay in front of you is from the UFN server. And I found that they were really, really good. Fighters have a lot of traits that make them superior to ships in many ways. And they're just able to do a lot of things that the big destroyers and the meta bricks and stuff just can't. And it all starts off with their reproducibility. Fighters are cheap. They're really easy to produce. It takes like five minutes to make an entire heavy fighter. And then you fill it with ammo and then bam, it's ready to go. That's it. Compared to making a bigger ship where you might have to take a half hour to an hour of throwing it through a welder wall. And also it takes a huge amount of resources. For the same resource count, you can build 20 or 30 fighters with no hassle whatsoever. When it comes down to producing them, you can produce just so many more fighters than your opponent can produce big ships. And the next point also kind of ties into that, as fighters are able to do a lot more damage per resource spent than the big ships do. When it comes down to combat, fighters are very much equipped to deal damage to your opponent. Even while you might think fighters are designed to be, you know, they fly in, they strafe, and they do some small amounts of damage, but they don't do everything. That's kind of not how it is in Space Engineers. A fighter in this game can carry copious amounts of weaponry, and in a lot of cases, it can and will decimate a ship that is far outside of its league, simply because the ship is unable to hit it or just deal with it at all. It is a well-known fact at this point that pretty much all the turrets, even including Gatling turrets, don't really have the ability to hit fighters when they're flying around at 100 meters a second, even within 400, 500 meters. And you can use that to your advantage in a fighter because you, that means you can use some of the weapons that fire slower and you can rack up some incredibly good hit rates with those weapons, whereas your opponent will be barely able to hit you in the first place. Compare that to meta brick combat or normal SE spin to win meta combat where you've got ships spinning around at 1.5k well outside of effective turret range, just trying to snipe railguns on each other. This fighter combat, it's like right in there, it's up close. It's, it's in a position where the enemy ship isn't able to dodge. And because dodging in this game is such an effective tactic, them not being able to dodge just leads to their downfall really, really quickly. So you're able to spin around them at super high speeds with really good weaponry and hit all your shots and deal a lot of damage whereas they can try to dodge you, fail most of the time, and when they actually go to hit you, the only weapon that's even capable of hitting you at the speeds you accelerate at is the railgun. And if you miss with your railgun shot, oh no, that's too bad. Even then, I found that some fighters, let's say the one that I built, is capable of surviving a railgun round that doesn't go straight towards the cockpit and can pretty much continue fighting after it takes a single railgun shot, and due to the size of most fighters, you're not going to take any more than one railgun shot at a time because your cross-section is so small that the other railgun just simply can't hit you. So you end up with one fighter being able to do a lot of damage to a ship and deal upwards of 15-20 minutes worth of damage with a ship that took five minutes to produce. The next thing about fighters is that you can swarm them really effectively, and they're super stealthy and super good at that. So fighters are small, obviously. You're not going to be able to see them, so they're really stealthy. And that means you can come in from multiple angles with this fighter and that fighter and swarm someone. Of course, there's downsides to this. The biggest one being that swarming another ship requires more people, and more people are usually not the easiest to come by. So in most cases, it's going to be you versus another ship with just a fighter. But it's definitely possible to sneak up on them and start attacking them without them noticing it because you're so small. And in the case that you do have another person, the other ship is going to be overwhelmed really quickly because they're able to focus on one person, perhaps, but they're not able to focus on two people, especially not when their turrets can't do anything and they're getting shot at from all their angles and stuff. When you have more than one ship attacking you, for example, let's say you're in a 1v2, the enemy's combat ability doesn't increase by a factor of two, it increases by a factor of three, because you aren't just fighting two 1v1s, you're fighting a 2v2 where the second ship can come in and use the first ship to attack from the rear and attack from all these angles. So having that swarm capability is really nice. And while all of this might sound really good for fighters, basically being able to avoid all their shots and come in stealthily and just absolutely rip a ship into shreds 
with only the fraction of the resources that that ship costs to build, they do have a couple of pretty big downsides that might not make them the most main line of craft. First of all, and the most important of all, they're small grid. And this means they can't have a jump drive, they can't have production, they can't have all the stuff that makes large ships go, so you can't live off of a fighter. A fighter is purely a combat vessel. You kind of got to bring it to combat and then go to combat with it. And it's not that easy to bring a fighter to combat without a bigger ship to bring you there. So fighters have a really difficult time going places, and they can't really go anywhere without the support of a larger ship nearby. Secondly, fighters have to manage more stuff than bigger ships do. When it comes down to design, and with fighters being small grid, they have a couple of things that they need to keep in mind when they're being built versus a large ship. For example, on a large ship, when you think about storage, you'll probably think about maybe having one large cargo container, but even then, does that doesn't need to be there. You can always just replace all your conveyor junctions with cargo containers and have plenty of cargo storage forever. The same thing goes for power storage. Large ship batteries are famous for being incredibly power efficient and just able to provide so much more power than the small grid variants. When it comes down to a small grid that needs to provide a lot of power, oftentimes it really just can't capitalize on this because it doesn't have the space required within its, its hull to field batteries to deal with that type of power consumption. This also kind of applies to thrusters and hydrogen storage. If you want your fighter to maneuver around fast, you're going to have to give it hydrogen. But for fighters, especially fighters that are doing a lot of maneuvering, that hydrogen is only going to last one or two minutes. You're going to need at least two large tanks to be able to deal with your fighter moving about. And the most important is the storage. What a lot of people don't realize is that ammo, ammo takes up a lot of space, especially if you want to field a number of weapons that are capable of obliterating large grid ships. You're going to need to store all that ammo somewhere. While Gatling gun ammo is quite storage efficient, both auto cannons and assault cannons, which are the two primary damage dealing weapons for small grid ships are not that ammo efficient. Their ammo isn't that space efficient. And you'll often end up in the scenario where even one or two or even three medium cargo containers won't cut it. So you need to find the space to maybe fit a large cargo container or fit all of these other smaller cargo containers in order to have ammo to keep firing for two or three minutes. So yeah, that's kind of the downsides and the upsides of fighters. They're really good. They can fly around, they can just decimate ships that cost 5, 10, 20 times more resources than they do. But on the other hand, they're difficult to manage, and they have a lot of quirks that goes along with their fighter combat that you need to deal with, and that large ships can usually just avoid by being so big. I hope you enjoyed your day. I think that fighters are probably on the better side as far as combat goes.